Ashes Remains started around September of 2002. Ben was playing drums in the band and Josh was, he was the, the worship leader there at that church at the time. He asked me if I would play bass and I joined the band. And that, that's, so I guess it's been six years for me and the band's been around, uh, been around for eight years. It seems like he was um, trying to start a band. So I went out on a whim and I was like, okay, I'll do it. It just seemed like it fit, like immediately. Bring me up. We probably threw out about 200 band names. I mean, it was like every everything something would come up with, like three of us would be like, okay, and then two would be like, nah, I don't know. Our first bass player was reading a poem that he wrote, and it was it was in the first line of the poem. It was something to the effect of ashes remain for far too long. And it was literally without, without a word, like all of us just kind of looked around the room were like, ashes remain. And it kind of took on a different meaning for every one of us, but the overall theme and the reason we liked it so much is it just speaks to the humility of who we are. Let God just destroy me and, and break down everything that I think I am and that gets in my way when I'm trying to do my work as a, you know, as a follower of Christ and, and let only the ashes remain so that he's the only thing that people see. Rob and I were kind of the key writers. Like I would write a song or he would write a song or we'd collaborate and then it was never a full song until we brought it into the room with the guys and everyone had like full rights to just rip it apart and rebuild it. Um, so that was our initial process. It's cool this time around, like we've never done co-writes before, and so it was definitely a stretch for us. It was definitely a huge learning curve. Oh, writing sessions, man, that's gotta be weird. Like, go in a room with a stranger and like, do you have an idea yet? Me neither. I've totally like come out of it a, a brand new writer, a, a different kind of person. Do you have one yet? No. Me neither. This is the first album that we brought the whole band in from the ground up. So, you know, Ben was our drummer. He was there throwing out lyrics and not just like rhythms. We'd be with a co-writer and he'd say, not that word, what's, what's a word? And you'd be like, the, you know, the is the word that we need right now. And he'd be like, that is brilliant. You're every I think we're an overwhelming band to have in the studio. Every one of us want to hear every detail. So if Ryan's in there recording a rhythm track, there's three guys kind of like leaning over his shoulder and like listening to every like note and every palm mute and what the strings are like. Because I love all the different gear and I like, you know, preamps and I like different guitars and experimenting with different gauge strings. A lot of times drummers go first and Ben always wants to go last because when he records the drums, he's listening to every guitar rhythm and every vocal accent to make sure that whatever he plays you know brings that all together. The whole time you're recording you're kind of it's like a mystery like you're waiting to hear what it's all going to sound like and there's so many different ideas and it's kind of the end of the day before you go home before you leave the studio to go back to the hotel you and you kind of hear the the product. Everybody kind of smiles and you know like looks around and everybody's happy. <laughs> This year, I'm excited to um, just play in front of people. A live band, I think, is, is our heart. Like, that's all we've ever been. Really developed our live show and realized the importance of a live show. And everybody should go see us. If one person comes up to me and says, I'm here because I, I heard of you guys or I heard you on the radio and I bought a ticket to come see you, that's probably going to blow my mind for a very long time. If you could make the sun burn through the night. We do have an 87 Ford school bus for our transportation. The fun fact is it only goes 45 miles an hour <laughs> on flat roads, so we really like going downhill. It does sound slow, because it is slow, but it does get us to where we need to go. It's got six bunks, two couches, TV, little kitchenette. Has no heat, has no AC. If it wasn't for the bus, we wouldn't be where we are. I mean, not because literally it takes us places. I'll be right here. What I've become to me is an album name, uh, as a collective group of songs. There's a recurring theme in it, basically a message of hope and, and also realization of brokenness. When I thought of what I've become, it was, I was listening to and reading through the lyrics to the song of Unbroken, and there's a spot in the chorus where it says, I, I hate what I have been. Um, it just made me think about the times in my life, like as a believer, when I could look back and 
and just realized that I had fallen so far from who I was supposed to be and that the path I was on was so wrong. The times that you're sitting there just bawling your eyes out going like, how did it come to this? Really? Like all this time's gone by and, and I just let something get out of hand or I let this sin completely ruin my life. Or, you know, that's how you feel in that situation. So what I've become for me is that pinnacle moment of, you know, you started on this path, somewhere you got off, but it's never too late to turn around and, and get back on the right road.